In this video, we'll have a look at the Kaplan-Meier curve, which can be used to analyze survival times. We'll first see how to compute and interpret the survival curve, and then see how to calculate the median survival time and their restricted mean. Finally, we will see how to compute confidence intervals and confidence bands. In the next video, we'll compare survival curves for the log rank test, and in the third video, we'll discuss Cox proportional hazards regression. Let's first have a look at this Kaplan-Meier curve. This plot shows the survival probability for the proportion of individuals that are still alive as a function of time, where the time unit in this example is years. Note that the time does not only have to refer to the time to death. Kaplan-Meier curves can also be used for other data, such as time to find a job or time to get infected after vaccination. Suppose that we have five individuals in our study and that we every year record the number of people that are still alive during the study. After the first year, all individuals are still alive, which is true also for the second year. During the third year, one person died, which means that 80% of the five individuals are still alive after three years. This explains why the curve goes down from 1.0 to 0.8, because 20% of the individuals in the study died during the third year. Note that we here assume that an event takes place at the yearly follow-up, although the person died at some time point during the third year. The survival time can be more accurately estimated if we use shorter time intervals for the follow-up or if we have information about the day of death that we will see later on. During the fourth year, another person died, which means that three out of five, or 60% of the individuals, are still alive after four years. During the fifth year, two individuals died, which means that only one person is alive after five years. This means that only 20% of the individuals are still alive after five years. After six years, the last person is still alive. The person also survived the year after. The last person died the following year, which means that the proportion of people that are still alive beyond eight years is 0%. To draw this survival curve, one usually first creates a table like this. To create such a table, we place one patient on each row and sort them based on their survival times. Since patient number one died first, it is placed first. And since patient number two, in this case, was the second patient to die, it is placed below and so forth. In this third column, we calculate how many patients that are at risk before the event takes place. And in the fourth column, we enter the number of events at time t which in our example corresponds to the number of deaths during a certain year. Since only one person died during the third year, we set the number of events at time t to 1, because only one person died during the third year. Before the first person died, there were five individuals in the study, which means that five individuals were at risk before the first person died. During the fourth year, a second person died, which means that four individuals were at risk before this person died. Since this patient has been included in the data in the previous row, we do not enter any numbers in these elements. Next, we calculate the fraction of individuals that have survived after the event. This is calculated as 1 minus the number of events, d divided by the number at risk before the event, n. Since one out of five at risk before the event died, 80% survived after the event. Since we now have four individuals left before the next event takes place, where one individual died, 75% of these four are still alive after the event. Out of the three individuals that are still alive, Two died, 
which means that 33% of these three are still alive after the event. At year 8, Les Parson died, which means that no one is alive after the last event. Finally, we calculate the survival probabilities, which we will use to draw the Kaplan-Meier curve. Since all individuals are alive until the first death occurs, we set the first row to 1, which means that we have 100% survival. We then move this one down here and multiply with a fraction in the previous column. This will give us 80% survival after 3 years. Then we move 0 0.8 down here and multiply with a fraction in the previous column, which will give us 60% survival after the 4th year. Then we will have 20% survival after 5 years and 0% after 8 years. These calculations seem a bit overcomplicated because the survival probability could be calculated just by hand. However, following these steps is crucial when we later will deal with censoring. For Kaplan-Meier curves, one usually reports the median survival time because Kaplan-Meier is a non-parametric method since no population parameters are estimated. The median survival time is simply calculated by drawing a horizontal line at 0.5 until we hit the curve, and then a vertical line until we hit the time axis. The median survival time is therefore 5 years in this example. It is also possible to calculate the mean survival time. If you calculate the mean of these 5 numbers, we see that the average survival time is 5 years. The same mean can also be obtained if you calculate the area under the curve. If you calculate the area of the rectangles below the curve like this, we see that the area below the curve is equal to 5, which corresponds to the mean survival time. We will now have a look at an example where we have censoring. A censored observation corresponds to an observation where the total survival time for a patient is unknown. For example, after three years, this patient left the study. A patient might, for example, leave a study due to severe side effects from the treatment used in the study, or simply because the patient moved to another country. We we'll therefore never know how long this patient will survive, because we have for some reason lost contact with the patient. After losing contact with this person, the person may die within a week or survive for years. The only thing we know is that the person stayed alive for three years before the person decided to drop out from the study. A study usually goes on for a certain time, in this case eight years. At some time point, we have to end the study. Patients that are still alive at the end of the study are also defined as censored observations because they have not died. This person may die the day after we have ended the study or die 10 years later. Similar to before, we fill in the survival times in this table. Note that we will fill in the survival time of the censored observation as well, which should correspond to the total time we know the patient was alive in our study. The difference with censored observations is that we now fill in zeros in the rows in the column number of events at time t because no event or death has occurred. This will affect these calculations. For example, since only a censored observation occurred at year 4, 100% of the individuals are still alive after the observed time for the censoring. The survival curve will now look like this. Censoring is usually represented by a tick on the curve. Note that, although person number 2 left the study during the fourth year, the curve does not go down. Instead, this censored observation is causing an effect on the next calculation where the next death takes place. Because the number at risk before the next event takes place, is now equal to 3 since one person has left the study. Note that the curve does no longer go down to 0 
because one person was still alive once we ended the study. Since only one person out of five survived throughout the study, one might expect that the survival probability should be 20%, but the survival probability is actually 26.7%, which is due to the effect of the previous censored observation. Same as before, to calculate the median survival time, we draw a horizontal line from 0.5 until we hit the survival curve, and then a vertical line to the time axis. We see that the median survival time is 5 years. However, since we now have censoring in our data, we can no longer calculate the mean survival time based on these numbers. Instead, we calculate the so-called restricted mean survival time, which is the area under the curve restricted up to the last time point. To calculate the restricted mean, we sum the area of the rectangles below the curve. The restricted mean survival time is in this example equal to 5.4 years. Since the Kaplan-Meier analysis is a non-parametric method, one usually prefers to report the median survival time. However, the median survival time is sometimes not possible to calculate if the majority of the subjects have survived once the study has ended. Suppose that our survival curve would look something like this. In this case, the curve does not go below 0.5 because more than half of the subjects survived longer than 8 years, which in this case means that they survived after the study had ended. This means that a horizontal line drawn from 0.5 never hits the curve. The median survival time can therefore not be calculated. In such a case, we can still calculate the restricted mean, which is here 6.4 years. We'll now have a look at an example of a raw data set. This study started 1st of January and ended at the end of the year. Note that patients were enrolled at different time points during the study. Two of the patients were still alive at the end of the study and are therefore defined as censored observations. We lost contact with this patient in April, which means that it is a censored observation. To calculate the survival type, we can imagine that we move the bars to the left like this. To calculate the survival time of this person, we count how many days the person was alive from entering the study until it died, which corresponds to approximately 8.8 .8 months. Since this person entered the study on February 11 and was still alive at the end of the study, its survival time is therefore 10.6. Once we have calculated the survival times based on the dates, we plug in this into a new table where we will perform the calculations. We first sort the individuals based on their survival times. Then we do the same calculations as before and draw the survival curve. The median survival time is 8.8 .8 months, whereas the restricted mean survival time is 7.92. We will now have a look at how we can calculate confidence bands around the survival curve. There are a number of different ways to do this, but we will here use the Greenwood's formula. This is the same confidence band that will be computed if we set the argument conf.type to plane in R. I will here show how to calculate the 95% upper and lower confidence bands, which are bands based on the pointwise 95% confidence intervals. We will first calculate the variance of the estimated survival probabilities. We plug in the survival probability at time t. We should then sum the data from the first time point up to the current time point. Since the first time point is the same as the current time point in this case, we will just use these values, like this, and do the math. We then plug in this value here, like this. This notation tells us that we should use the critical value from the standard normal distribution, since we like to compute a 95% confidence interval. That value is equal to 1.96. The square root of 0 0.02315 is about 0 
which corresponds to the standard error or the standard deviation of the estimated survival. This is the same standard error as shown in the output of the statistical software tool SPSS. If you now plug in the survival probability, we can calculate the following intervals. We can then plug in the lower bound here and the upper bound here. Note that since the survival probability cannot be greater than 1, any value greater than 1 is simply set to 1. The confidence interval for the next time point is the same, because this is a censored observation, where di is equal to 0. The confidence interval for the time point where the second event occurs is calculated like this, where we plug in the current survival probability here, and then we sum the data from the first time point up to the current time point. If we do the math, we'll get the following interval. Then we do the same calculations for the next time point and so forth. Note that any negative value is set to zero. Once we have calculated the intervals, we can draw the confidence bands. For example, these values define the lower band, whereas these values define the upper band. Note that these bands should not be interpreted as we are 95% sure that the entire curve is located within these bands. Instead, we can only say that at a certain time point, we are 95% certain to find the true survival probability within this interval. The true survival probability can be seen as the survival probability obtained if we had measured the whole population. We'll now see how the 95% confidence interval around the median survival time is calculated. Since the horizontal line at 0.5 intercepts the survival curve at time point 8.8, .8, the median survival time in this example is 8.8 .8 months. Since the line intercepts the lower confidence band at the time point 4.1, this will correspond to the lower value of the interval. However, since the line never intercepts the upper bound, no upper value can be obtained. The second option is to instead calculate the 95% confidence interval of the restricted mean which in this example goes between 4.73 and 11.11. .11. The following equation can be used to calculate this confidence interval. Remember that we calculated the restricted mean as the area below the survival curve. This calculation can be denoted like this, where we estimate the restricted mean by integrating the survival function between 0 and the last time point which in our example is 11.6. If we would sum up the areas of the rectangles, we see that the restricted mean is equal to about 7.92. This notation therefore means that we should calculate the area below the curve from the time point of the first event up to the last data point in the data set. This means that when i is equal to 1, we sum the area of these three rectangles. And when i is equal to 2, we calculate the area of these two rectangles. And when i is equal to 3, we calculate the area of only this rectangle. If we plug in the numbers and do the math, we can see that the estimated variance of the restricted mean is 2.646. The square root of this value is the corresponding standard deviation of the restricted mean, or the standard error. For a 95% confidence interval, the critical value from the standard normal distribution is 1.96. If we plug in the values and do the math, we will get an interval that spans between 4.73 and 11.11. .11. This was the end of this video about Kaplan-Meier curves. In the next video, we'll discuss the log rank test that can be used to compare two or more survival curves. Thanks for watching.